Hey, it's Chris. Welcome to the week's main upload, which happens every week at 8 p.m. Eastern. If you didn't know, make sure to make yourself a reminder or mark it on your calendar. This is gonna be a fun video. We're gonna be exploring the differences between a really cheap budget phone, a very capable mid-range phone, and a super expensive flagship phone. This is not gonna be a video where I just sit here talking. Instead, I want you to see with your own two eyes the differences that you get based on what you're willing to pay for a phone. And I definitely think you're gonna be surprised in several different ways. The stars of the show today are gonna to be the $150 Figo Gravity, the $500 OnePlus 5T, and the $950 Galaxy Note 8. I'm gonna make a prediction right now that the phone that surprises you the most today is gonna to be the OnePlus 5T as you're looking at all the comparisons. Because not only does it absolutely kill the budget phone for just $350 more, but it comes dangerously close, but doesn't quite touch the bleeding edge status of the Note 8 for $450 less. Now, obviously this video doesn't represent every budget, mid-range and flagship phone out there, but I do think that it gives you a really good idea of what you get when you pay more or less for a phone. Time to get paid myself. Today's video is sponsored by Fabric, makers of Chorus, the number one alternative to Amazon Echo. The Chorus, with voice-activated Amazon Alexa built in, is a smarter speaker for a smarter price. The Chorus connects with up to 10 other Fabric speakers for a multi-room experience, has a dedicated charging dock, and importantly, has several stylish designs to choose from. Pick one up using the link down in the description to start streaming from your favorite music services with superior sound quality and style. All right, let's start this comparison off by looking at the screens because that's arguably the most important thing about a phone. You spend all your time looking at it and it affects everything. As we take a top down look here, I think it's important for you to know that I've got the brightness cranked all the way up on all three of these phones. Now let's start by talking about the OnePlus 5T, which is the newest phone of the bunch and makes a great frame of reference because it's right in the middle of the other phones price wise. For $500, the 5T is rocking an 18 to nine aspect, full optic AMOLED display that measures 6.1 inches corner to corner with 401 pixels per inch. It's also got an adaptive mode, a night mode, and a reading mode, which are all nice things to have. Now there are still some bezels here on the 5T, but they've definitely been reduced compared to last year's model. For $350 less than the 5T, the budget Gravity has a 5.5 inch 720p IPS display. Let's just be honest, like that is pretty, pretty awful. Unfortunately, even as I've barely touched it for several months, I can notice there's several dead pixels on the screen, which are very prominent when I boot the thing up. Now there's no denying it, the gravity definitely has the biggest, thickest, chunkiest bezels of the three. But for $450 more than the 5T, the Galaxy Note 8 has a 6.3 inch Quad HD Plus Super AMOLED display with 521 pixels per inch. And the Note 8's Infinity display has a near bezel-less look with an edge-to-edge -edge screen that definitely looks the best out of the three. Now in terms of brightness, both the OnePlus and the Note 8 appear very similar to the naked eye, but the budget phone just doesn't come anywhere close. It's quite dim, even at full brightness, which of course makes a big difference when you're trying to view it outside. I do think that the whites look slightly cleaner on the OnePlus 5T than on the Note 8, but the colors do seem to pop ever so slightly more on the Samsung. And if you look really, really close, and you gotta look close, then things like text on the Note 8 do look crispier. Next up, let's talk about performance. The OnePlus 5T, our mid-range pricing option, features a Qualcomm Snapdragon Octa-Core processor. Now guess what you get for $450 more on the Note 8? Basically, the exact same Snapdragon. But for $350 less, you do get a far less capable Cortex A53 processor on the Gravity. For the most part, the 5T and the Note 8 handle things very similarly. Opening apps and multitasking happens very quickly and differs by maybe a few fractions of a second here or there. Sometimes the Note 8's faster, sometimes the 5T's faster, but not by much. It's probably worth mentioning though that the 5T has eight gigs of RAM where the Note 8 only has six. Now the ultra budget Gravity on the other hand is just much slower on all fronts. It's very, very noticeable how much slower it is. We're talking about opening apps, we're talking about multitasking, we're talking about gaming, we're talking about things even like cutting and pasting. It all takes a lot longer. Now in gaming, I was actually most impressed with the graphics output of the 5T. The texture on the road in a game like Need for Speed was much more pronounced and the in-game lighting just looked much better to my eyes and several of your eyes as well because I polled you on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. The gravity really struggled to load a large game like Need for Speed, but it was eventually able to play it even though the graphics were just much, much worse. Next up, I want to talk about cameras because it's one of the most important features on a phone. You have important things going on in your life, you need to get great photos and videos, so it really matters. Not surprisingly, when it comes to price,
pricing. Cameras are one of the things that really get a quality upgrade or downgrade based on how much you spend. Now, two of these phones have dual camera setups, which is really becoming the standard these days, and I'm sure you can guess which ones they are. And of course, having those dual cameras is a major advantage. To me, the OnePlus 5T seems to take sharper and more detailed selfies, as you can see here in my eyes and my shirt. I also think that it seems to have a little less noise in low light conditions and captures a bit more detail even than the Note 8. And I actually feel like the Note 8 takes slightly warmer pictures and makes blacks and whites a little bit blacker and whiter than the 5T. And those kind of color profiles really come down to your personal preference and most people, your average consumer, probably doesn't even care. I would also say that in very well-lit environments, the Note 8 seems to have the cleanest images when you do an extreme zoom in. The gravity, on the other hand, has several different issues, but chief among them are darker images and colors that just don't pop. I will say this though, the budget camera surprised me by being less crappy, honestly, than I thought it was going to be. With a little bit of editing, you could definitely use these pictures on social media. Next up, and this is an important one in this comparison, let's talk about special features because this is one area Area where the flagship priced phone really distinguishes itself from the other two. Obviously, we would kind of expect the budget phone to basically lose in every single category except being more affordable. While the mid-range, like you've seen, has kept up pretty well with the flagship priced phone until this category. Budget phone, no special features. 5T, very solid phone all around, but nothing groundbreaking. Well, aside from its price, but I'm talking about features though. But you look at the Note 8 and there's several different things that you can point to that really set it apart. Number one being its stylus. It's called the Note because you can pull out the stylus and take notes on it. That's like a totally different concept. The Note 8 also just has a bigger display and more screen real estate and that gorgeous infinity edge. Plus it has big speed, wait, that's not really a good thing. Samsung really touts that, but it's nowhere close to being awesome right now, but it's there. The lesson in this category of special features is that the core features of a phone exist on all levels, but when you get to the upper tier, the upper crust, things are a little bit different. It's not stuff that you necessarily need to have, but it's like cool extras for people who want to be on the leading, bleeding edge. Next up, battery life, which is very important when it comes to picking out the right phone. Here, the OnePlus 5T and the Galaxy Note 8 are pretty much neck and neck again because both phones have 3,300 milliamp hour batteries. But one place where these two phones differ is in how quickly they can charge. Surprisingly, the 5T absolutely charges faster than the Note 8, although they both do have quick charging features. The Gravity has a much better battery, ha, <laughs> just kidding, seeing if you're paying attention this far into the video, much worse battery and no fast charging. Software is another way in which phones in different price categories tend to differentiate themselves. Both the 5T and the Note 8 are running the newest version of Android at the time of filming, which is Android N, Nougat 7.1.1, while the Gravity is still running on an outdated version of Android, Android 6.0 Marshmallow. So if you want better battery life, better notifications, split screen support, and better security, among other things, then being able to have the latest software version is definitely a bonus. Now finally, you probably feel it approaching. We're getting towards the end of the video. I wanna start wrapping things up, but I wanna talk about the design here before we do that. Now, I wouldn't say that any of these phones really look inherently bad, even the budget phone. I couldn't say that. Now, the gravity isn't ugly, but I would definitely say that it's less sophisticated and refined than the other two phones. Comparatively, the OnePlus 5T is certainly an upgrade, which feels a bit more premium, but doesn't break the mold or push any boundaries. Unsurprisingly, and thankfully for all that money you're paying, the most expensive phone here, the Note 8, does feature a design that is leaps and bounds ahead of the other two phones. Although it is noticeably thicker, but also noticeably sleeker. So let's wrap this thing up. We're talking about pricing and the differences when you buy a more expensive or cheaper phone. Well, the differences are definitely there. I hope you've been able to see that. Sometimes you're blown away by how big the differences are. And sometimes you're blown away by how little the differences are. In either case, I hope that you have a better idea now of why phones cost what they cost and what you get for what price range. And now it's time for some recommendations. When should you get a budget phone like the Gravity? Well, probably, honestly, when you have no other options. Budget phones in general are getting more and more usable, but they're never gonna be ideal. So when should you get a phone that's priced more in the mid-range, like the OnePlus 5T? If you want a solid phone with all of the core features that you would expect, then the OnePlus 5T is an amazing option. Also, if you want a phone that basically feels like a flagship, but is maybe just missing a few of the bells and whistles, 
and you wanna save some significant money, then something like the OnePlus 5T and the OnePlus 5T in particular is an amazing option. And that leaves us with the final tier, the flagship tier, something like the Galaxy Note 8, which you should buy if money is no object, or you should buy if you're very style conscious, or if you just wanna be on the bleeding cutting edge. So hey, thanks for watching today, guys. Old subscribers, new subscribers, I appreciate you guys a ton. And if you just discovered this channel today with this video, why not become a subscriber? There's no time like the present, right? And make sure to turn on notifications with that bell icon if you wanna be one of the first people to see a new daily tech video. Also, tune in Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern for the main weekly upload. From time to time, there's some bonus videos, so you can catch those too. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.